Herzlich willkommen zum 36. DocFest. Es ist Sonntagabend live um 20 Uhr sind wir für Sie hier auf Sendung und zwar live aus dem prachtvollen Silbersaal hier im Deutschen Theater. Mein Name ist Florian Schwarz, bin Sprecher und Moderator beim Bayerischen Rundfunk und führe durch diesen Abend und ich freue mich auf ein sehr spannendes Filmgespräch. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 36 Dog Festival. We are live on a Sunday evening here. It's 8 p.m. and we're going to have a wonderful and interesting talk with three directors and producers of our film Wood, the Stolen Forest Game Changers Undercover. First of all, I want to introduce the three ladies who are in different countries on this planet and we're gonna are live broadcasting to them and we're gonna start with Monica Lazorean Gorgan, one of the producers of this award-winning film uh, from Four Proof Film. Hello Monica, where are you located this evening? Hi, good evening. Um, I'm, I'm talking from Bucharest, Romania. Excellent, and you can hear us loud and clear. And your role in the film was also not only producing, but also directing. We are coming to this later on. Yes, co-directing, co-producing, yes. Excellent, thank you very much, Monica. Then we have Ebba Sinsinger. Um, she works a long time ago also as a curator and organizer of film festivals, studied in Vienna, and is since 30 years in the documentary business. Ebba, can you hear us loud and clear? <laughs> Ebba? Ebba is still on mute, I think. Okay, Ebba, could you unmute your... Device. Okay. Excellent. Hi, Ebba. And unmute us. Okay. Excellent. Um, uh, where are you located right now? I'm talking from Vienna. From wonderful Vienna. And uh, you are since 30 years in documentary um, business, you can say. Was this one of your uh, thrillings, of your most thrilling films? Sure, definitely. This was one of my most thrilling films <laughs> because it. Uh, Uh, sometimes you don't know the scope of a project when you start it mm -hmm. and then it becomes exactly what you hoped it would be and that was the case with this film. And you could and really... What we hoped for the result, we hoped that the film has a result and during the filming it already had some. Absolutely, we're going to talk about this then. It has a very strong development and with a very interesting uh, finish. And then we have with us uh, um, director Michaela Kirst. Um, she is uh, broadcasting from her garden, I think. Hello, Michaela. Yeah, Where are <laughs> that's you? right. Our, our garden, our uh, Stebergarten in Berlin, because it was the first beautiful day, so I really could not have everybody leave with me, so I need to be in the garden. Maybe it gets a little dark later, but hey, it's a wonderful weather, you know. <laughs> Excellent. And you have uh, wonderful trees in the garden, of course. Yes. They all have a happy life, these trees, in the Schrebergarten. Yep. I don't know the translation of Schrebergarten. These are little gardens. Since when I have you a Schrebergarten? Are you owner of a Schrebergarten? Well, we actually were very lucky. We were on the list, but then last June we, we got it, which was really great, you know, during the pandemia to have a place like this. Excellent. It's one of the most precious things right now during the uh, Corona pandemic, uh, having a Schrebergarten. The lists are very, very long. But let's start to talk about the film. But of course, we have a Q&A live here this evening. And therefore, I have a wonderful co-host. Kati Seemann is with me. Good evening, Kati. Hi, good evening. The questions go directly in your laptop or how does it work? Yes, of course. Um, the questions are going di directly in the chat. You can find next to uh, the, live the video live stream on our website. Mm -hmm. And please feel free to ask some questions. I will receive them. Yeah. Excellent. And then we're going to ask these questions. Uh, we give it always to you three and you just start who is able to huh? answer the questions. You can just jump in and then we, we see who is answering. The film Wood, Der Geraubte Wald, The Stolen Forest Game Changers Undercover, runs on the Dogfest uh, Munich in the empowerment uh, section. And first, of course, my question, how did you three get together for this project? Maybe we start with Monica. 
Yeah, uh, basically I initiated the project uh, because in Romania uh, this uh, illegal or abusive legal logging, uh, it's an issue. It's mm. an obvious issue and I wanted to, to, to say this story and to go a bit international. I didn't want to keep it, you know, like a national or a local story. So I approached Eba. I knew Eba from previous projects. Um, and I approached her saying, okay, there are some uh, Austrian elements also uh, happening in, in Romania. Mm -hmm. Let's talk more about this story and see how we can make it uh, bigger. And then Eba was directly on board or did you have to convince her? Well, she did not have to convince me. <laughs> it was just that we started thinking how to make it really big. And I was at that time working together with Michaela on a completely different project. And she, uh, I knew that she made a film with Alexander from Bismarck, who became our protagonist mm -hmm. also. So she made a film with him and I thought that he could really be on the one hand really of help i mean we discussed it so he he would be of help to the romanian ngos to put their work on a different level and on the other hand it also would make our film more international excellent so yeah. you have immediately the feeling that it's going to be a big story exactly. yeah 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 Michaela. and then you know yes just go ahead. Yeah, you had the connection already to Alexander von Bismarck. Tell us a little bit how you met him. Well, uh, you know, I was living in New York at that time, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a very, um, uh, you know, I still like to read the New Yorker because it's such a really very well-researched uh, magazine. And there was a very first article about uh, Alexander von Bismarck, Mm -hmm. uh, and his work, and I felt like, well, th this is really a film that has to be made, a story which has to be told, but it was impossible to reach him. So one day I was on a different, uh, you know, work, whatever, in, in D.C., in Washington, D.C., and I just, um, you know, went to his NGO, and he was there, and I co convinced him uh, to work with me um, on the first film, which uh, was a film about the same subject, but it was uh, concerning uh, Rosewood uh, from Madagascar going through Hamburg, actually, uh, to the United States. Um, and I, it, it was a very successful film, but it was a television story, a one, one hour, one off. And I felt the entire time, you know, this is, I mean, uh, his NGO is doing such a specific, particular work that, um, you know, he should be in a bigger film, on the big screen, you know, if it would be a campaign film, it would be even better. So that's, uh, yeah, how that worked. And then, you know, once we finished that film, which also won some prizes, I was just working with Ebba, and then we decided to all join forces uh, and work together on, on the topic. Excellent. And um, for the audience, Alexander von Bismarck, he's the director, the executive director of the Environmental Investigation Agency, an NGO located in Washington, located also in London. Um, he is a trained, uh, and a trained uh, Marine. So that's what uh, makes him, as you can read um, also by preparing this, as jungle proof. But of course, he's not that. Yes. In case you haven't seen the film already, he is definitely not this guy, but. Uh, it's a good uh, thing to know behind that he's pretty fearless and uh, because we, there are quite some undercover uh, researchers during the film and quite some very um, drastic scenes also where you get confronted uh, with uh, the, the wood industry. So Michaela, this was um, the idea to make also this film really an international, a bigger film. How did you get then started to get the uh, film financed? Because we have like five or six different countries. It's really a huge project. Um, who brought the money together to shoot the film? Well, I think that, that you know, Ebba was the main producer on that project. So I think that's the question really Ebba should answer. Ebba. In yeah, Vienna. okay, so we, it was not very hard to convince the Austrian Film Institute and also the ORF. Uh, it's more hard to get the film sent by the ORF now. 
but it was easy to convince them to finance it. And Monica also had the money quite early. And it was also, and, and Film Tank Hamburg uh, is the German producer and Michael a co-producer. But uh, the um, Film Tank also got the money from Berlin, Brandenburg, quite, uh, it was smooth. It was mm. actually a smooth financing. So you could like, having this uh, information really start and planning start also the trips to different countries and one main country oh, no not right it was no it was uh, everything was a little bit delayed because mm -hmm. also alexander from bismarck he needed his work to be financed because right. initially not planning to go to romania and he was not aware of the situation there Mm -hmm. And so he had to convince his organization and also his donors to uh, give him money for the project. So this also, so before we really could start, uh, two years went by, but we did some pre-shooting uh, together with him in Siberia and China. Mm -hmm. So this we started with only our money, but it was not the... I mean, Alexander's money was not sure at that time. Okay, okay. Jumping to Monica in, in Bucharest, uh, Romania is one of the places also where you shoot a lot. Um, there are scenes where Alexander has really to change his, um, his, his, his appearance by darkening his hair. Uh, he's more red hair guy, but then he had dark hair. So um, how, how long did you shoot in Romania or was it always on and off? Were you like uh, different times in, in Romania? Yeah, sure. Uh, it was on and off. We had like sessions of, of shootings. Mm -hmm. um, it was not easy to organize it because he was coming from us uh, the uh, the crew the filming crew was coming either from austria or from uh, germany um, i was doing the research and i was like wanted to go further and you know until we gather everybody in one spot it's not you know it's not that easy but uh, yeah, we had also like nine or 10 shooting days in a row and they were intense with intensive way of planning, changing plans in the last moment because things were happening uh, uh, differently than we expected in one place. So we had to adapt to all the changes. Plus then uh, the EIA and uh, the team of Alexander uh, um, uh, started doing more research. Um, uh, so they came with information to us and we were following them. So it was quite dy dynamic, diverse, I would say, the filming. And yeah, I interesting. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I, I could sense a bit of adrenaline but not, not da dangerous. Um, in Romania, the, the shootings were not dangerous. It's not really a dangerous country, I would say. And plus, I would not put my own uh, team, uh, crew, my own people in some uh, strange situation or dangerous situation. So we were preparing, preparing the shootings. Mm -hmm. But for example, in the north, very north of Romania, where we film with that community over there. Um, I know it was a car following us and so on, but the guy who was driving us and showing Alexander the, the place and uh, with whom we, we follow one truck, he was later on, not just because he, he was being seen with us, but with another, uh, with, the, with the television uh, crew. Mm -hmm. And he was, uh, you know, um, pushed a bit like you should chill down and not show around to people this this and that area so yeah there are pressures here all kinds of pressures mm -hmm. but i can imagine on the one side as a film team you had to be very flexible and really very good organized and on the other side i mean uh, talking about stolen wood um, 
this is quite a million dollar business where people uh, don't like to have troubles. Uh, they want to do uh, their business. They want to sell illegal cut wood. And that's why um, we have, I had quite the impression in the film that there were some scenes where it was kind of a little of a danger for the team. Um, how much risk can you take uh, working investigative? Well, I, I think that, you know, in this case, because I had filmed with Alexander von Bismarck before, and, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, he is a, he's a, you know, not just an ex-Marine, he was really in one of the early troops mm -hmm. uh, of the Marines, so he's very well trained. So um, I did trust him, you know, mm -hmm. I did trust him that uh, the assessment of danger, you know, would he would be right to do this. I mean, there's always a rest risk. And I, I would say yeah, in Romania, I never felt um, threatened. But let's say in Siberia, you know, that was, you know, at the very beginning of the mm -hmm. filming, mm -hmm. didn't have the financing on place yet. Uh, and also um, in China, you know, if you're in a factory somewhere where, you know, I mean, the team can't even go, maybe the cameraman went, just like just, you know, pretending he's a designer. He also had to take a different, um, you know, identity, and he just had, you know, like a, a photo camera. Mm -hmm. Not really. so. So th there, you don't know. You know, if somebody then figures out that, um, well, you know, you're actually here to do some uh, spy work. Uh, that could be dangerous, sure. But um, but I think uh, Alexander von Bismarck and his crew they're really well trained and they really try uh, to never take that risk. Mm -hmm. They always say, actually, you know, we are come in, we come out. You know, we know how to do it. So there's a rest risk. But the people who are really in danger are actually the people on the ground, the NGOs, the people who fight in their countries for their forest, for their nature. They can't leave and people know them, you yeah. know. So that, that I think they are more endangered, actually. Those people who really, you know, fight in the country, everybody knows them. But that's quite an interesting point, what you mentioned, uh, Michaela, that there is this ambiguity between a film team, uh, an investigative uh, documentary film team, jumping or flying in a country, shooting and getting out again. Of course, you have all the news and information and you spread it with the world, but the yes. people who are in this system there in the countries, uh, how, yes. do you wage, how do you wage this um, versus uh, the risk for the people who had to stay in, in Siberia, in Romania, in, in, uh, in China? I think that the people who are um, active there, the activists, you know, they choose to do that. Mm. Yes. And they mm -hmm. see us as some kind of, how do you call it, Sprachrohr for the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like the tools to spread the, yeah. the, word, the news, the information. And they know, for example, in Siberia, you know, when I did research on Siberia, exactly in this area. So I read that the mafia on purpose, they killed uh, local people mm -hmm. in the years before and had them, you know, with a swollen belly, like uh, travel down the armor, the bodies, mm -hmm. you know, so so they float by all villages so that the villagers don't dare to do anything against the mafia anymore so yeah of course a very cruel sign and and this is like mafia structures work and i think this is um, sorry to say but globalism and mafia is is very much the same everywhere so they they try to um frighten and scare other people of course not to um yeah to to disturb them um what I had a quote from Alexander in the film. I think this is I, I, at, at some point he's then in the U.S. and he's sitting in his Tesla, a very calm situation and in all his um, safe and secure life. But talking about these people, what you were talking right about, people who had to stay um, in these countries and these salespeople, they commit unknowingly crimes by selling illegal wood. Um, but they have no other choice because they make a living out of it. Well, uh, you know, I think, and that was one of the reasons why I felt, you know, one film is not enough for Alexander von Bismarck and his NGO, and especially the work they do, is because, uh, you know, unlike a lot of other NGOs, which they do a good, great job also, uh, you know, they're not just pointing the finger, they're not just finding out, which is already difficult enough, you know, to like really uh, do the role research, find out, you know, where it is legally cut, and then, you know, have the whole thread going to the consumer, uh, mm -hmm. where we buy our stuff. 
But what they really try to do, and that's very specific and I think very important, is they try to change the laws. They, they really try to change the system. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that is, is, is you know, one of the things which is really unique. I mean, of course, there are other people doing it, but I didn't meet any NGO before who was you know, really so successful, for example, uh, changing the laws in the United States. Uh, uh, they uh, they uh, initiated the so-called Lacey Act, which uh, you know that means the United States has a has the most uh, severe uh, illegal logging law in the world. The United States, mm -hmm. you know, from all countries. So so um, I think uh, that is that is really a very important thing that they try to change the law worldwide because uh, they also say you know if you can't change the law if, we, if our you know democracies uh, can't do it anymore if corporations um, and mafia is too strong then we really have an issue we have to try to do it within the system let's change the system within it i think that that is the really actually the really exciting part about that work absolutely this political aspect and of course you could feel it in the film at the end where you have really a, a justice case uh, um, we talk about in this film about um, one major project is the lumber liquidators project it's a mm -hmm. it's a company that you um, look very close after and the other one is um, the holz industry schweighöfer an austrian company acting worldwide now they changed their names to hs timber group um, was it clear that you would uh, come to these two big players in the illegal market by your researchers? Uh, I mean, Alexander from Bismarck, they were already working on lumber liquidators. So okay. that was Five actually mm -hmm. a project that we went in because we thought that we will really structure the film in this way that we uh, go into one project that's close to finishing. And we go, and then we, uh, Romania was the subject that we would carry throughout the film. And then Peru would be something like a starting point. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, just to put that, you know, it's not like that Alexander von Bismarck and his crew is, you know, they're not doing the work to find a specific company. It's just, you know, they track the wood. They track, you know, where it's illegally being cut and then where does it go? So uh, that they find those big players that is just random, you know, it's just like, it's just by doing their work, uh, it turns out that those people are doing it. It's not that they're targeting, you know, let's say Ikea, and then we want to find that out. It's just by, you know, doing their work, they, uh, it could be in any other, you know, it's like, it's more like, it's a, it's a system, you know, it's like, and then you, you, you get to the big players because everybody's using the cheap wood. And it's actually, called, it's called, it's called follow the wood. It's it's follow the wood where the you know the log from the from the uh, forest is taking you. So if it's taking an all you know the logs are going mostly in one company yard, then we should yeah they they think like we should look further in there what's going on. And they actually I mean they actually did two years of research themselves like the EIA. Mm -hmm. in Romania and then they said you know they will stay with Shrykova because Shrykova was in every aspect uh, involved. Mm -hmm. the, oh we have we have wonderful uh, birds singing they um, have their habit in the in the woods behind you in the Schrebergarten uh, Michaela wonderful. Yeah um, it's like an Amsel. <laughs> absolute but this is the habitat is is the woods because it's a nice thing um, in in Siberia it's the tiger the Siberian tiger whose habitat is yeah. is taken away so please let the trees there stay and then the birds can have their home. Monica, back to your follow the wood. Um, that, that was kind of a motto of, of the film. Um, you always were successful in the film if you followed a truck, if you followed people going to the woods, cutting illegal woods. Um, but then you had a, a guy, um, and I don't know exactly his name, I think he was uh, developing an app um, to follow yes. actually the, the, the trucks. Um, was it, was it uh, Bogdan? Bogdan Miku, correct. Bogdan Miku, Bogdan. yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about his work? Because this app must be very successful for a lot of uh, countries. Uh, this app, it's, it's a wonderful invention, I would say. Not hard at all to implement it, actually. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it was Bogdan's idea because he's also an activist. He's also a businessman. Um, and basically, and very briefly, uh, he proposed this app to the Romanian government, to the Ministry of Forest. Mm-hmm. Um, and luckily, in uh, luckily, uh, 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 he 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 was accepted. So he developed the app. The app was uh, that was back like four or five years ago, I would say. The app was transparent, was working well. We could see how many trucks, if the trucks were illegal, from which place to which place they were being taken. So Mm -hmm. the app was transparent. Um, Then Sasha came, Alexander von Bismarck came, and and he he said, oh, but this app, it could change systems, could change laws, could improve so much. And then he invited Bogdan to implement the app also in Peru, but not just in Peru, but also other countries. Um, And uh, 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 to update you with Bogdan's app in (laughs) Romania, unfortunately, you know, the political parties are changing, the dynamics uh, in the government are ongoing. Mm. So now, unfortunately, Bogdan's app is, is... extremely limited to just you can check if this truck is legal or not so basically Mm -hmm. that's it right now we can use it but it's uh, it's limited but it's um it's you know it's such an important app that could i i don't want to say big words but could save entire forests Mm -hmm. all around the world Mm -hmm. you know and of course, you should all use these um, modern methods. Of course, you had drones in your film and like really checking where wood was cut. On the other side, the industry like HS, uh, the Timber Group, um, has also developed an app. It's called, I think, Tim Flow. Uh, and they want to prove with this that their wood is only cut legally. So is it sometimes also a fight between the apps? Did you, did you feel, felt this in the, in the movie? Um, fight between apps that would be wonderful to exist such a thing maybe this app that you mentioned uh, it's something new Uh, it's something that the company develop it by by themselves because maybe they have some rigor some pressure from outside I don't know I cannot talk what they they have in Mm -hmm. there but would be wonderful to have, you know, apps and people proposing things. It's all about transparency yes. and trans- transability, you know. Yes. Uh, Actually, so. because of Alexander von Bismarck's work in Romania, you know, and everything went to the parliament and stuff. So then this put and and uh, Schweighofer lost his green seal, FSC seal, you know, that the wood is... Um, the the wood certificate. Wood. Certified, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, then he was forced actually to do something. Then he was like working, trying to work together with, with people who also worked with us, but then they preferred to develop their uh, own tools, mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. Also, now they act as if they would, um, how, how can I say, they, they say that the wood they get is safe, but on the other hand, it's not true. It's maybe half true because mm-hmm. now it's less, um, there is less evil wood less in evil the wood. Industry. Yes, okay, okay, less evil wood. I mean, okay, the, I think the, the, um, the furniture, um, it doesn't care if it's um, uh, evil wood or real wood, but the thing is, it should be definitely legal wood and uh, people should get paid for it. And um, as it's becoming more and more rare right now worldwide, I mean, I talk to, to in Munich to guys, they say, we cannot get any wood right now for doing reparations and all. Um, and this is, I think, quite a, a legal market here. We are halfway through to our um, Q&A about uh, the film Wood, the Stolen Forest, Game Changers Undercover, talking with the directors and producers, Monika Lazurian gorgan Eba Sinzinger and Michaela Kirst. And I ask my co-host Kati if we have already some questions yeah. in the chat. Yeah, there are some uh, questions and also 
nice words to you. Um, somebody is writing, the film sounds very interesting. Somebody who didn't um, watch the film. Another mm -hmm. one is writing a very important film. Thank you very much. Um, I read the first question Mon to Monica. Um, how present is the topic in Romanian society? Maybe um, before and after this um, crime of uh, Schweikhoff was uh, published. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the last part of uh, the um, how how present is the topic in in the Romanian society? Maybe before and after this uh, crime was published. Mm -hmm. um, the topic is always uh, it's absolutely always uh, uh, something that we talk and we are aware and we, I mean, people, you know, so basically people are more and more aware in the last few years, people are more and more aware and, and uh, within the film, you know, we, we were filming that was 2015. And something happened. This I, I, I'm, an, I'm answering to, to, to your question. So something happened uh, in the Silvic law, in the Silvic uh, system, um, uh, and uh, regarding the leg legislation. And they wanted to chill the legislation. They wanted to change few things. So one company uh, should exploit more, um, more uh, wood. And then the, the, this was basically a big change in 2015 um, uh, for the for the Silvic law. It was more permissive, more uh, uh, simple uh, uh, law. And then uh, uh, we spoke with Alexander von Bismarck, and we said this is impossible. This will let any company, you know, exploit enormous quantities of of wood. And then we decided, and, and uh, they decided, the EIA decided to come out with their uh, investigation with, um, with the, all the hidden cameras and everything. And um, so basically, at the end of April 2015, they came out with five minutes of a film when they were sh showing, as you, as you could see in the film, uh, the material they, they uh, gathered, uh, the position of the company and so on. You know what happened, I mean, you, you saw in the film, but wh when I'm remembering and when I'm st saying it, it's, um, it's still very present for me. Nine days after the, after, uh, the, the press release, when we brought the, the small film to the, to the Romanian uh, uh, audience and to the people, nine days later it was a protest. Uh, everywhere in Romania, in Bucharest, there were many people and everybody was saying we want you know the forest to be uh, treated uh, legally and uh, more carefully and so on so um, now uh, within the last i would say five years people are more and more aware uh, people they are more careful they are more um, uh, involved in the cause uh, they care more for the forest so i would say um it's the there are not the same amounts of trucks leaving the forest as we speak uh, co in comparison with 10 years ago i would say good impact yeah uh, another question is um how um what, what surprises you as filmmakers um, the most during making the film? Hmm. Surprises? Um, it, I mean, it, for me, I, I enjoyed it because it was, uh, it was the, the, the filming and the shootings were dynamic we changed things, we were, you know, always considering things and moving and readapting. Uh, and I enjoyed that, you know, it was not like a pre-scheduled shooting with this and that. Um, I learned a lot from the way EIA is working. I learned a lot from them, from uh, my colleagues. So for me, it was uh, thrilling uh, and, uh, yeah, excited moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just think that, you know, if you do this kind of films where, you know, I mean, it's an investigation, it's an investigation, but it's actually, it wasn't, 
I mean, Monica did also research in Romania and, you know, supported EIA. But in general, you know, most of the um, uh, undercover work and investigation was done uh, by Alexander von Bismarck and EIA. And just, you know, to fall, I mean, that you never know what's going to happen. You know, I mean, for example, that I think one of the surprising facts, which was also very surprising for um, uh, Alexander von Bismarck, is that, you know, usually he actually, um, you know, he doesn't pretend uh, to be um, uh, uh, like a seller. Usually he, he's a buyer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then in the film to be suddenly the, the person who's going, you know, into a company with a different identity as kind of a wood spy and saying like, uh, you know, well, I have wood to sell you here. You know, that was really something very surprising, I think, that for me that, you know, that and that that actually, you know, worked in a way in which then also got the results, which Monica just um, described, that, you know, people actually, by releasing footage of that, you know, stand up and said, like, well, we don't want that to our forest to happen. Yeah. But, yeah. And for me, very interesting were also the training methods, because they had uh, ex-Mossad people who work now for the environment, mm -hmm. and uh, also as safety guards for people, but also, I mean, just mm -hmm training how to help yourself if you are in dangerous situations or also how you do research to get good results mm -hmm. so they had different specialists there mm -hmm. and so i thought that was interesting very good mm. another very interesting question is um if there is any chance to uh, to show the film uh, in cinemas or even a television in romania yeah, well, yeah, that's, uh, we, that's a, it's a wish and we want that. We had, it, we had the film uh, last year uh, in few festivals, uh, uh, like uh, um, uh, on site, um, but just few. But of course, we will show it uh, this year. We plan for the summer and for the autumn. We, we, we plan and we will keep you updated on the, on the Facebook uh, of, of, the, um, of the film Wood Lemn, Lemn it's, it's called in, in uh, Romanian. And okay. in Austria, the cinema start is at the beginning of June, like COVID pushed us back and back and back. Mm. But now you have the beginning of June as an option to bring it in the, in the theaters? Yeah, I mean, that's for sure. Excellent, excellent. That is very good news. <laughs> yeah, that's a good news. And uh, I have to to add something. Um, the, the person who who asked um, that uh, she is um, writing. Uh, it's a very great film, and literally, um, it took her off uh, the shoes, as you say. Sieht einem die Schuhe aus in German. So, this is for you. Absolutely, because as we have this situation here on our festival that some have the, seen the film already, some gonna uh, look first of all here our uh, Q&A and then they gonna jump in and, and, and watch the film. So um, sometimes we, we uh, have to talk about things that you haven't uh, might not seen. Um, in the film, uh, the, the traveling is once uh, you, you had, I think what I like very much about the film, these different aspects really from different parts of the world, like from Siberia to Romania, then to Peru, total different uh, um, um, uh, people there and total different um, connection also to the wood. And then at the end, um, not to s tell too much, but at the end there is this big press conference in, in Vienna where you get really a confrontation between the managers of one of these big companies from HS Timber Group and Alexander von Bismarck. And you could feel that there was really a lot of tension in the room. How was this, was this also from the timeline really the end of your shooting, this big press conference in Vienna? Uh, no. It uh, yeah, it was more at the end, towards the end, but it was like before Peru, we shot Peru afterwards. Okay. Yeah, I mean, also the, the interesting thing is that, you know, we had no idea that, uh, uh, you know, I mean, that press conference was a press conference uh, of EIA uh, and other organiz NGO organizations. And, you know, when we came out of the conference and suddenly, you know, those press people of Spikova were there. So we were absolutely that nobody was prepared for that. They just planted themselves there and just said, well, we used the space. You know, it was like in a, in a, in a cafe, in a Wiener cafe house. Um, we ran so, the 
cafe house, you know. <laughs> yeah, so that was really super surprising. They just decided, what are we going to do? That we had no idea that this, nobody had an idea that this is going to happen. You mean also the, the connection then between um, the management from the HS Timber Group and, and Alexander from Bismarck? Was this not planned? No. That they no. get to, that was not planned? No. No, no, no. because they, it was like this that uh, uh, Schweighofer, they hijacked our press conference. Yeah, pros. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is like in political demonstrations when people like <laughs> yeah. put their banner before. Uh, interesting. Yeah, okay, so they, sure. they really, um, but um, you had quite some uh, good reports then afterwards in the, in the ZIP, for example, in the news, uh, the most famous news show in, on Austrian television. Um, so was this not a, a shot in the knee for, for Schweighofer to, to hijack this press conference? No, it was Idea. not. This uh, was a little bit independent because there is some ORF journalists who were following Schweighofer also with Sasha from Bismarck, like in Romania. So mm -hmm. it's not just like this. Yeah. Mm. yeah. There, I have a very um, uh, important question, uh, which uh, is linking to uh, we talk, uh, what we talked before. Um, was there? Ever um, a meeting between uh, Schweighofer and um, Andreas von Bismarck? Because they talked in the film that they maybe they will meet, but was there even a meeting right. after? I asked Alexander von Bismarck whether there was a meeting because we did not know. And also, I think at the beginning, Alexander did not know himself because he has the policy. Actually, if they bring somebody to court, you know, they don't meet. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you know, this is a conflicting thing. On the other hand, he tries, he wants the wood industry to be better. So if he does not talk with them, right. he thinks, you know, they cannot be better. Yeah. And then they, uh, you know, he made a, somehow this compromise that he met mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. but obviously not in a, in a situation that was filmable because uh, this would not be productive. The talks would not be productive, you know? Th this is a very in uh, interesting point because um, in, in the film you have really the feeling that the manager from the HS, from the Schweighofer group, really wants to meet up with Alexander from Bismarck and he was very, um, yeah, very sh kind of shy or like very neutral and, and very not going to take this offer. But on the other side, I had the feeling that he's not a guy who closes doors. And what you say, I mean, to make the wood industry better needs maybe some compromises also. And, and this balance, um, no, uh, somebody but it's like Alexander, is possible to make it. Yeah, yeah. But it's difficult because if you bring somebody to court, yes. you know, uh, you sh it's difficult to meet them. To bring flowers in the prison. Because it could be corruption, you know? Mm. Right. But it's a so, better way than to really close, I think, all doors and um, not have any conversations anymore because um, that's what you want to per perhaps achieve also with this film, to have a conversation about it and not only to, of course, to damn it and to, to bring yeah. it to court, mm -hmm. but have a conversation how things can get improved. This exactly. is perhaps our outlook. Yeah, and also I think that, uh, you know, you need, I mean, you're right that you need to talk to the industry if you want to change laws also, because uh, lobbyism is in all countries of the world a very big factor. So, you know, you have to convince them that it's actually better for them also. Yes, yes. Um, and it happened, and it happened. I mean, Gabriel Poun also met uh, one of the activists who are uh, in, in our film. Uh, Gabriel Pohn from Romania, he, he met uh, with people, decision makers from the big company and they met with few occasions and they were planning things together. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, important to have this, uh, this uh, dialogue. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you know, they were planning things together, but then uh, the company did not do it. So they made their own thing. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, preparing to this talk, I read in the newspaper, um, because we talk of kind of a rights of nature. Of course, a tree cannot himself go to court, 
that's, that's clear or a wood. But in the, in the US, in Orange County, in Florida, rivers and uh, seas, lakes, it, it was the first case, I, I don't know if you read about it, they could, get, they could go to court now. Um, um, they have kind of um, um, a right of, uh, they are capable of holding rights, uh, a right to exist, a right not to be polluted. So a wood, a forest, could have the right not to be cut off. Um, do you think that that is an idea for the future, to give right to nature? This is music to ears, what you are saying. <laughs> <laughs> This, this would be so wonderful. And again, we go to the, to the law. If mm -hmm. this exists in a law, we can use the law, you know, to put pressure, to respect the law. So it's always coming back to the law. We need open-minded people to understand this concept, mm -hmm. uh, that, it, that it's so crucial and important for, for what we have <laughs> you know, uh, right now with climate change and, and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's all about, you know, putting pressure on the, on the politicians and having the positive lobby going on uh, in, into this direction. Yeah, yeah. So maybe it's an idea. It's in Orange County, Florida is one, one case, but maybe it can, can be multiplied and um, also to... To, to woods. Yeah. Kathy. Um, actually, I would be interested uh, to know uh, how is it going on with the forest and the, the national park where the trees disappeared? Are there measures to replant new trees? If we talk about Romania, uh, and if I mention Gabriel Paun, Agent Green, it's an NGO. Uh, they are very much specialized in national parks and uh, uh, with the fights uh, for the for protecting the national uh, the national parks. We have extremely beautiful national parks with very old. Uh, forest, uh, some of them say semi-virgin uh, forests, so we still have a lot of wild forest and, and animals over there. Um, when we talk like very di directly, if, if, if I can answer to this, uh, on, the, on the national or on the, on the, um, from the government side, no, we don't plan. They, they don't care of the, of the national parks. Uh, there are many debates in Romania about national parks. Uh, um, uh, people are still exploiting and taking woods out of national parks, even though the law is saying you cannot take out, uh, uh, you cannot uh, cut trees uh, within a national park. But there are some derogation. You can cut if this and that and that. So everybody is going on the side of the of the law. Mm. Um, so the situation it's not uh, it's not optimistic in Romania on, on in this regards, unfortunately. No, because um, uh, um, the the silvic section the uh, they see the forest as as money uh, as uh, as an income. Um, so they, they, this exploitation, it's an income that should come here and there. So they don't, don't see it as a biodiversity or, or something. They see it, first of all, as an as a income. Mm. So it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> the situation is like that now. It's not, uh, it's yeah. not easy. I also have uh, uh, two questions. Um, the first one is uh, for me as a, as a customer, after seeing this film, of course, I'm a little bit insecure um, if I buy furniture, if I buy uh, wood for my floor, whatever. Um, how can I trust the certified woods that I see in a, um, in a Home Depot or some, somewhere else? Uh, how can I really be sure that it's not illegally cut wood? Do I have any chance as a customer? No, you are. You cannot be sure, but you can trust the labels a little. A little. That means twenty percent. <laughs> uh, I mean, I saw a very good uh, television program from France 2, mm -hmm. so a French television program about IKEA, 
Yeah. And I checked all the labels in this TV program also, the FSC label and the other labels. And uh, they found out, you know, that uh, they, they uh, asked for a label on a parking lot in front of a supermarket. Mm -hmm. So an old asphalt place and they got the label for that. Okay. So if you can do that, you know, you cannot be 100% sure. But what you can do for sure yourself is uh, buy sustainable stuff. I mean, buy something, buy less and buy better quality that lasts longer. So mm -hmm. you need less trees. And if so possible, if possible, local, of course, local wood, if possible, yeah. the same with, with food. I mean, we could have the same discussion about, about food. Um, and the other thing, what I um, feel more and more, that um, all the companies, like, um, you, you buy something there and you get a reward because the company plants then trees. I mean, you buy water, you plant a tree. You fly somewhere, they plant a tree. You buy a... Um, I mean, every, everybody is right now planting trees. Is this really helping? Um, because a tree takes seven, eight, ten years to, to grow. Um, a ten-year-old tree is very... Or is it tree washing? Oh, I mean, the real big trees, they take 60 years. Yes, exactly. So, for example, I was in a discussion on a, when the film was shown at the Viennale, at the Fest, Viennale Festival in Vienna, mm -hmm. and the sustainability manager that Schweikhofer employed was sitting in the audience mm -hmm. and he said, okay, but in Romania now the forest area increased. So yeah. I did not really know what to say, but then, I mean, I got my information later. You know, it's just shrubs mm -hmm. and the yeah. Uh, all shrubs and forests. Yeah. So you can cut the 80-year-old trees, 150-year-old trees. You cut them and then you call, I don't know. Exactly, exactly. And also because the shrubs, also you get them, for example, if you find that arable land is not good enough anymore, and so you let it develop into a forest, yeah? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's not a but they call it forest land just because they don't uh, uh, make don't use it for agriculture. Mm. And that sounds always nice, um, but I don't know if it's a if it's a solution. Um, and what you could see also in the film that even the the the, the, the speed of uh, they said okay after three or five years I already take the wood and buy it and normally it takes seven or eight years. I mean this is cruel. Maybe there's one. Uh, yeah, but in, in the same time, can't be a solution. I mean, of course, who is bragging with plat, uh, uh, planting trees? But on the other side, you know, when you have so many areas that used to be with forests, that it's not some people are saying, well, it spontaneously uh, will regenerate. Mm -hmm. In some places, uh, they, they will not going to happen this. So in some cases, it's, it's important to replant, especially, for example, around Bucharest. It's a big uh, 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 city and we have uh, no, you know, protection around the city, proper mm -hmm. protection. So this planting in so many situations are some important things that should should happen. So, you know, it's always a, yeah. a big discussion. And, this. But also and back, uh, yeah. Michaela. So I just wanted to go back to your initial question, what you can do as uh, a consumer. And I think, you know, I mean, EIA was working for a long time now on an app, actually, which I think will be launched also at one part, point in Europe uh, as a German app, whatever, that, uh, you know, you can actually track, you know, you can scan, uh, you know, the product, and mm -hmm. then you can see, you know, like, uh, if you see there's no information about, you know, that wood product, uh, uh, you know, you can actually through the app um, ask the company, please give us the information where it comes from. So they're, they're working on, on doing this so, so you can, as a consumer, be also more active in a way. And you are developing this app? No, EIA. EIA. Uh, you are, okay, okay. The, the, almost, uh, all right, the Environmental Investigation Agency. All right. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. you can get it over their website, certainly, the, the um, AI. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how that, I mean, I, I don't have it yet, but I know that either it's yes. just released or it's about to be released. So that, of course, that, that will be a good tool, uh, you know, to use for consumers. Excellent. I mean, these are all small pieces and uh, the film makes it visible and it, it uh, yeah, we have the discussion about it that's so important and um, we have maybe two or three last questions. Yeah. I mean, uh, first I have to say that uh, there are many praises uh, to the film uh, people are writing. Thank you for this impressive film or um, what I learned is uh, what investigative journalism can achieve. So thank you to, uh, to the film. Um, one question is, what do you want to trigger um, in the best case um, or achieve in the viewer of the film? Maybe this is also, I mean, this, it links to the, what you talked before with um, scanning or buying good wood, but mm -hmm. if there's something special. Um. Awareness, awareness and taking a position, it's extremely important in our days. Mm. Yeah, and I also think that, you know, um, uh, the spirit of the film in a way that, you know, we can, I mean, there, there is a possibility for change, uh, uh, even if it's difficult, but there, there, it's possible. So I think that, that is, a, is, for me, a really important message. Mm -hmm. And I have a quote also from the film, that the system is always a sum of people, of course, if, if the, the, the really the, the small wood uh, worker there gets paid better if, if the, the regions, uh, the politicians look closer to it. I mean, it can only work together as a system. And uh, this is not only economically, but also politically. Hmm. I have a, a last question here. Uh, Somebody is asking, do you know uh, if the app in Peru um, is, exists already for the indigenous uh, people? We saw this um, scenery in, in, in Peru. Yeah. The app of tracking? You mean yeah. the tracking yeah. app from, from Bogdan? As much as I know, they're still working on it because it's always, you know, you have to work there also on, on different governmental levels to be able to do that. So I think it's, as much, but I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's not finished yet. Okay. Excellent. If we have more questions, I think we have a special tool here on the DocFest. Um, I think you can still ask questions and then what happens then? Well, you also can um, write your questions directly to the filmmakers. Ah. So we, have a, we have a tool there on our website where you can um, write or also give some praise to the filmmakers. And it's called POST2? POST. Post uh, to the the film. Film. So, so that can be post that you, as, as the three filmmakers here, can get post or posts, post, I don't know, post mail. is mail, <laughs> yeah, mail to the <laughs> filmmakers. So this is also a tool to communicate with the audience because during this festival people can uh, see this film um, and of course we highly recommend this. Um, so I would say uh, closely getting to 9 o'clock uh, p.m. and it's still light in Munich in the Schrebergarten. Uh, wonderful. In you Berlin. Have in. Hmm? in Berlin. Ah, in Berlin, not in Munich. Okay, excellent. In the Schrebergarten. And um, thank you very much to Michaela Kirst in, in the Schrebergarten. Thank you <laughs> yeah, to thank Ebba you. Sinsinger <laughs> in Vienna. And thank you to uh, Monika Lazurean Gorgan in Bucharest. So we talked about this film and I had at the end uh, this quote, no wood, no world. So we have to be really careful about the wood and we have to give them rights perhaps uh, to the wood. And of course you have to spread this film. We are all channels and one of this is uh, this festival um, here in Munich, our dog fest. I think we could slowly go to the uh, to the to the closing of this session, I would say. Or do you have some more things to? Um, maybe I uh, at the end I can um, I can read another uh, praise uh, somebody mm -hmm. is writing. I think it's great and important to accompany um, such people with the camera to make their work more known uh, to a wider public. So thank you uh, for the film as well.
And of course, this film is also in our prize. We have the Dreisat and Kino Kino Publikums Prize, and you can vote for this definitely. Um, and this is also important. It goes through the whole festival, and then at uh, Friday, the 21st of May, we're going to have the prize ceremony. And um, with the Publikums Prize, would Der Geraubte Wald, the Stolen Forest Game Changers Undercover? We talked with the three filmmakers and the producers of this film. Thank you very much to you. Have Thank a lot of much. success Thank and a lot of viewers. And thank you to the festival. So we were very happy to be selected also. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you very much for doing such a great job, you know, regarding the difficult circumstances to have it online. So thanks a lot. Absolutely. We're doing the best and people take it also, I think, as a big chance to have, um, to have like, um, yeah, a film to discuss about. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye from Munich.